Welcome to the Health Channel, all health, all the time. I'm Kathy Buccio coming to you from the Baptist Health South Florida studios. Now from being healthy to kicking bad habits here on the Health Channel, we are always trying to give you the tools you need to make positive changes in your life. But sometimes, no matter how hard you try, it doesn't work out and might even leave you more stressed and more frustrated. I am currently not stressed or frustrated, and I'll tell you why. A scientific approach to making changes in your life we're going to hear about that with our guest today. Her name is Dr. Wendy Guess, a behavioral change marketing educator with the College of Business at Florida International University. Welcome to the show, Wendy. Thank you. Glad now, to be here. we need to tell our viewers why I'm so zenfully <laughs> playing this instrument that this is divine, I have to tell you. It, it is. The first <laughs> why time am I, I playing heard it, it was just like, <laughs> uh, it's um, called a Mona Lena sound therapy instrument from the company Field Tone. And this is going to be a huge part of what we discussed today because it's an, a tool that actually helps in the stress management and finding yeah. that balance and that harmony that we're going to be talking about, correct? Yes, absolutely. Okay, I'm going to do this, but <laughs> I have to put playing. it aside now before my stage manager <laughs> kills me. Okay, so let's get into this story. Tell me a little bit about your background and what it is that you do, and especially dealing with harmony and wellness. So currently, I teach marketing at FIU. And before that, uh, I was involved with a lot of health and wellness, fitness, um, and, and that journey started or continued really uh, because I had found myself being all, you know, so active and, and doing everything I thought was living a wonderful life. And then I found myself with an autoimmune condition, which sort of uh, decided to reprogram how I was going to express life. Right. And so as a result, I found I really need to learn more about stress management and understanding the emotional aspect, the physical aspect, the mental aspect. And so um, here I am. So then how did, what does healthy living mean to you now as you went through that change? Well, yeah. So originally it was like, well, you know, you eat, you eat good and you're exercising. I mean, that's it, right? Well, I quickly found out that no, that wasn't it. Right. And so for me, it's become this journey of understanding that there's multiple components to living healthy. It's not just one or the other right. or two or more. It's, it's really, for me, it's like a group of five things that I try to focus on every day to, to make sure that I'm getting that, that well-rounded well-being. Absolutely. And we're going to get more into that in a second. Now, I want to talk about a term you use to put these changes and balance into perspective, and that is harmony. So can you talk more about when you, what you mean when we talk about or when you say harmony? Sure. Well, in the harmony aspect, you know, when you think about music, you don't just play normally one instrument in an orchestra. You have, you have multiple instruments, and they each have a part in the big picture. So when you've got all the notes playing, you hope that they're all playing their right notes, and then all of those individual pieces come together and make this beautiful symphony right. or production. Same in dance. So you know, you've got multiple different dancers doing multiple steps. That creates a harmony. That create this amazing harmony. And on the flip side, when you're, when you're not in harmony or when you've gone out of harmony, it's like somebody's playing out of note and you're kind of going, ow, ow, mm -hmm. this hurts. Um, or, you know, dancers off here when the rest of them are over here. It's like, so something's off. And, and, I, and I think you bring up the analogy of dance because I know that you love to dance as well. So this okay. also is it's part of your own harmony, correct? Absolutely. And that's kind of where it all came from as I was teaching dance for years and years. And... So as a result of teaching these dances and trying to describe the style, right. the styles kind of took on this uh, sort of persona of their own. And that's where that's awesome. I kind of realized what dance is all about. Right, absolutely. Now you hear so many times, um, Dr. Guest, that you trying to find that work-life balance or <laughs> is there such thing as balance? I don't think there is, but somehow it goes beyond that, right? Yes, yes. Because to me, you know, especially like talking about dance, uh, you look at the balance of yourself. You know, it's like one foot, two foot, maybe mm -hmm. hand on the floor. You've got one or two points of balance that hold you steady. Uh, now you add a partner into that mix, and you're not only working with your balance. Sorry about the mic. You're also working with with their balance. Right. And now you're having to have multiple things going on to make sure both of you are in balance and executing the steps. So it, it really became quickly aware to me that 
we're, there's more things going on right. than just balance. But then what are the challenges that come? There's something that obviously disrupts this balance. What are some yes. of those challenges that disrupts yes. the balance? So I like to use this analogy, you know, especially so many of us that are in a, in a service oriented pos position, right? whether you're a parent or right. in healthcare or whatever the, the, the area is that you're in, you're giving and giving and giving and you're giving and giving some more and then eventually you're, you're empty. Right. It's kind of like the cup, you know, and your cup is empty. So now what are you giving? when you're giving. There's nothing to give. <laughs> but you're still giving. Right. So now we're giving emptiness. And so the, the idea or the, uh, you know, the idea of pouring from an empty cup kind of really visualized for me is like, oh, maybe I should kind of work on refilling that, that cup. That is a very good visual. So then how do you refill that empty cup? And that's where we want to talk about different, uh, you know, finding those activities that maybe you're lacking in. So let's say, you know, you're constantly giving. Well, when do you give back to yourself? And how do you give back to yourself? And what should that look like? Right. Um, you you know, know what I like that you just said? You are responsible for giving back to yourself. Yes. It can't be reliant on somebody else. You have to find that balance yourself. Exactly. And, and you know, there's so, especially young mothers, which oh, I, I know believe you have, you have a few kids. I <laughs> have two kids, maybe. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, there's years when you're a young mother and the kids are just really demanding a lot of your time and energy, you know, what do you do? Right. Because because they need that. You need to be there for them. And, and you know, over the years, I've met so many young mothers who are just like, I'm so empty, you know. And and I was like, okay, even if it's just 15 minutes in the bathtub soaking with salt, I mean, you need that time to replenish you. Absolutely. And I'm very big on that. Actually, I lock those doors and stay in the <laughs> bath and. Pretend I'm deaf. <laughs> and it works. Yes. Okay, so um, one of the things that we have to talk about when we talk about that balance, though, is stress. Mm -hmm. And that's one we no, no one can escape. So how does that interfere with finding that balance? How does it hurt our harmony? Well, right. So when, when you're in that, set, um, that setting of stress, you know, you've got something that we want to differentiate between the kinds of stress. So there's Acute stress, which, right. okay, some tragedy or some huge event happens, good or bad, and that's a one-time stress, okay? Then you deal with it, it's done. But what we're facing today is really more of chronic. everyday stress, yes. the chronic stress that you're living with it day in, day out. Back to the analogy of young mothers, you know, <laughs> those kids are just there. And and even though they're a wonderful joy, sometimes they 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 pull us off balance mm -hmm. or they pull us out of harmony. And that's where, you know, we need to recognize that. Now, over the years, I've thankfully been able to recognize when I have reached a certain level of stress, um, my body now gives me symptoms. Right. You know, that's the one good thing of having an auto autoimmune disorder is it kind of just says, hey, it's time now. It's time to <laughs> shut it down and rest. And, you know, so I, I notice right. my triggers and then it's like, Oops, okay, I'm there. Because if I let it go too long, then I go into toxicity. And I'm, you know, and then it's just toxicity is spewing yes. out of your mouth. You're not fun to be around. So it's really, it's about recognizing where your patterns of stress are mm -hmm. so that you can make that check mark to go, ah, okay, now I need to make sure that I'm doing something to fill that cup back up. Absolutely. I, I, I speak your language, uh, Dr. Guest, because <laughs> I think that's important too, to listen to your body who is who, your you have this one body who is telling you, this is what I need. Don't use that empty cup anymore. We need to refill it. We need to replenish mm -hmm. ourselves. And I think that's really important. And as uh, Dr. Gast mentioned, some stress is normal, but chronic stress is not normal. In fact, chronic stress can not only disrupt a balance in your life, it can be a threat to your health as well. Let's take a look. Stress means that you're alive. It affects all of us. You can't escape it. It's not a bad thing. The challenge of modern life is that that acute stress response sometimes gets locked in and it becomes chronic. There's now increasing evidence to show that chronic stress can lead to chronic depression. So empowering patients with these different strategies is really paramount in terms of looking at preventative medicine for those individuals in the future and really improving their overall medical health outcomes. I guess the take home message is knowledge is power. Know about these systems, know how, how they evolved, what they evolved for, 
And experiencing stress acutely is beneficial because you're facing a threat in the moment. And so you want your evolutionary bi biology to take control and to be there for you when you need it acutely. Our day-to-day -day lives have become very stressful. There are increasing work demands, technology has blurred our work-life balance ratio, and we're all multitasking. So I think we all need to be empowered with understanding that this takes a toll on us emotionally and physically. Now when we think about stress and we think about finding harmony, how does that fit into the Harmony Profile that you've created? Ah, so the Harmony Profile, that was basically an outcome of years of watching people figure out this dance thing. And so I created some questions that kind of helps us understand where we show up in maybe a stressful event or a, or a group setting right. and how we tend to respond as they relate to some of the personifications of social dances. So we're going to get more into these Harmony profiles. I even did my test online. <laughs> You're watching the Health Channel. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Health Channel, all health, all the time. I'm Kathy Buccio, and joining us is Dr. Wendy Guess, a behavior change marketing educator with the College of Business at Florida International University. Now, this hour, we are talking about a scientific approach to finding balance in your life and making positive changes. And another word for that balance, Dr. Guess, is harmony. And we have here the circle of harmony. So can you tell us more about the circle of harmony? Yes, so the Circle of Harmony are, are the kind of the five dances, if you will, mm -hmm. that, that I put together for this profile assessment. And so we'll just kind of quickly go over each of the ones. So for me, Foxtrot represents wisdom and not the wisdom as in we're so smart and old, but the wisdom is more like taking time to really reflect on our life's experiences so that we learn the lesson from them. Right. And also thinking about, you know, just, just the whole mind and body connection, right? If, if we're not breathing, if our posture's poor, then our brain is kind of cloudy and foggy and we're not thinking as clearly as we'd like to. Mm -hmm. And then we look at the empower. Empower is like the salsa. And so it's really about empowering your own expression of health or your own health and well-being. Right. Taking that motivation, you're, you're that person that really motivates the crowd to, to get on the same page, get on the boat, get going. So you're also very goal-oriented. Um, and then you, all, you are thinking about your own physical well-being. Mm -hmm. In the expression, I equate that to the tango, because the tango is that kind of na person that navigates around the dance floor, in and around, not only your partner, but the other dancers on the, on the floor. And you're also that person that really knows how to negotiate from a verbal perspective. And so from there, I look at that a lot as how are we expressing ourselves? Are we expressing ourselves from our own place of authenticity or are we just, you know, trying to just say something that pleases right. others, that type of thing. Then we look at creativity. Creativity to me is the idea is, is what's missing in most profiles, if you will, the personality profiles. They don't talk about that sense of creativity because who am I as a creative being? Well, I'm not. It's not about the talent or the skills. It's really about how am I making life unique to me. Mm -hmm. So they're the idea person, constantly thinking of innovations, ideas. If you think about the dance itself, it was created swing. at the same, the swing dance, yes. yes, was created at the same time as jazz music. So the musicians were creating stuff, the dancers were creating stuff, and it was just this constant, hey, what about this? What about that? So it's just trying those new things. And then we move over to the waltz or the inspiration, which is you know, you might think of the soul. Am I really filling up my soul and inspiring myself? Now, for some people, that's fine, you know, walking out in nature. For some people, that's uh, listening or reading to things that really just give you that sense of joy and inspiration. And this relates to those harmony profiles that we were mentioning before our mm -hmm. break. And you actually have an animation to give us an overview. So let's watch. Is your business and life performing in five-part harmony? Let's think about choreography. 
Like an orchestra, you'll find multiple rhythms synchronizing together to create inspiring harmony. We have multiple roles in various systems that also need to synchronize. Our roles may overlap and we find ourselves feeling like we're spinning out of control. Now we're in chaos or transformation. Maybe our business even needs a culture change. Recognizing the need to rebuild harmony helps you navigate throughout your systems or roles with more efficiency. How do we start to choreograph the rebuilding of harmony? I've spent decades performing, teaching, and choreographing social dance. It became like an experimental lab for studying the elements of interaction. I discovered each dance I taught took on a unique persona that made it come alive. The reactions I observed offered profound insights into the systems they represented. Out of this experimental lab came the Harmony Profile Assessment. The Harmony Profile helps you discover your dominant harmony that feels more comfortable and your disharmony that may need more support and attention. The Harmony Profiles reflect the personifications of the wisdom of the foxtrot, the empowered salsa, the expressive tango, creative swing, and the inspiring waltz. Which one will you connect with? Find out how you dance through life and business. Take the Harmony Profile Assessment now at drwendyguest.com. So what I want to know, Dr. Guess, is how did you create these profiles? From, from years of watching the dances and watching and trying to explain and describe the styling of dances and as I was reflecting on the wisdom piece of it and the creativity piece and bringing them all together and realizing that when we're off balance or we're out of sync in one area that we really need to boost some activities to build us right. up so that we are feeling more well-rounded. Okay, so let's get a look at the profiles again. And first we see here the Foxtrot of Wisdom. Yes. Okay, so I want to bring up my profile because <laughs> awesome. I did it and you're here, so I want to take advantage of that. Right. I got the Foxtrot and I got Swing. Yes, so swing for you was the the dominant profile. So okay. when you're, you know, when you're in that group or around or in stressful situations or change or things like that, then we tend to express what's comfortable for us. So mm -hmm. in your case, the swing, you'd be the idea person, but also what do we got to do? How do we got to fix this? You know, here's an idea, here's an idea. So you're always trying something, you're innovating, you're avant-garde, which is an awesome thing to be. Well, thank you, Wendy. Yes. Okay, and then you said that's the dominance. So then that's now here pops in the foxtrot. Yes, so then in the foxtrot, the idea there is, is as a disharmony, where that may be where you're feeling depleted or maybe you've spent too much time in or something. So we want to find some activities that help rebalance okay. the harmony. Not that anyone is good or bad or dominant or non-dominant, but that knowing where you're where you're out of sync, perhaps, right. in a stressful situation is like, okay, so because I know I need to bring in some of the Foxtrot, activities, I'm going to focus on those for maybe this week. Right. And so for you, it might be things like just taking time to breathe and taking time to find that really excellent posture of about and lengthening the spine. So if we As do we that. do this. Yeah. How do we sit up nice and tall um, and just taking time to just breathe? I think this is really on point. I thought I would be a little more of the salsa, but I guess the swing matches and definitely the I need to do more breathing. And more yoga <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. as a young mother, right? Okay, right, so right. then it seems that when you do the harmony profiles with someone, they're usually mm -hmm. given two profiles, a dominant and a not dominant? Yes. Okay. So you want to know where kind of this is like your comfort zone. This is where you hang out when, when you're in those awkward moments or out of your comfort zone. Right. And then the disharmony is the one where you might want to spend some time adding some support. Okay. And, and that can change based on the situation you're in, but in general... This says this is where you're out of harmony right mm -hmm. now. So you want to bring in those activities to support that or and ideally we're always working on all five areas right. to keep them in harmony, in harmony, in balance. So then how can someone apply their harmony profile to improving their quality of life? When you're when you're, you get your profile, for example, yours, the, mm -hmm. the swing 
and then the Foxtrot. Right. So knowing that when you're, let's say, if I'm in a really stressful situation, I'm going to pay attention, poor attention to the Foxtrot type activities. Okay. So like taking time to breathe, working on the posture, um, taking time to maybe even journal, reflect. You know, there's physical activities, emotional activities, mental activities that go along with each one of those. Also finding foods that are going to support more brain function. So we know that things like the nuts and, and berries and, and leafy greens are going to really help support the functions of the brain. So if you know you're going to be spending a lot of time, like, like you know, the end of the semester when I'm grading, right. you know, I'm trying to add a lot more of that into my diet to support the brain function. Okay. Now, you brought one of these activities, and if you're just tuning in, I played this in the beginning of the show, and <laughs> I've never been more relaxed in my life, Dr. Gass. Yes. So talk to me a little bit about this instrument. So this is when I, I went to a workshop. I heard this for the first time a few years ago, and it was kind of like, the <laughs> Right, it was your aha moment. <laughs> I found my, my, the instrument I can actually play. Okay. And uh, so it's based on th sound therapy on the monochord, which is, you know, in fifths. Mm -hmm. And the overtone in the strings, I'll just start playing, the overtone in the strings creates mm -hmm. this reverberation that, that helps us balance and center and ground so literally, you are connecting all the different vibrations in your body and harmonizing them. Right. So now you're working in sync like you should be. And this promotes that harmony and that balance mm -hmm. just by the sounds? The sound, the vibration, yes, because we're all operating and, you know, I mean, we are vibratory mm -hmm. beings. And so when we're in stress, we've got all these different vibrations going on that create kind of like a static energy right. or that sound of the chalkboard. And so that's going on in our body. So what this does in my thinking is it kind of helps re connect all those different vibrations into one again. Oh, this is feels marvelous. I can just do the whole show, my eyes closed. <laughs> <laughs> so what profile will would this be for? All of them. <laughs> If my husband is watching, we need to buy one of these for the house. <laughs> I will be like this. So all of them, all of them. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, they really support any of any time you're off. Right. It just supports. And so for me, I mean, I've even had some digestion moments, and I was like out of out of in the middle of the night, going, right. I am not going to ER yet. Yes. <laughs> so playing. I thought, okay, I'm going to try this, and it really it just like dissolved it away. Really, to re-energize us. I love yeah, that. Keep just, playing. Now, still not sure what harmony profile fits you best. Well, we'll talk about how you can get your harmony profile. Plus, we'll talk more about how you can implement better habits into your life when we come back, if we come back, because we're gonna fall asleep. Now you're watching the Health Channel, All Health All the Time on South Florida PBS. Lovely. Welcome back to the Health Channel, All Health All the Time. I'm Kathy Buccio, and joining us is Dr. Wendy Guess, a behavior change marketing educator with the College of Business at Florida International University. Now, if you have a question, please call in using the toll-free number 855-796-4475. We'd love to hear from you. Now, some of our viewers might be wondering, well, what profile am I? And you actually have a website for that, Dr. Guys. So yes, let's take a look at it and how it works. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about the website. What are we gonna be answering on the website? So on the website, of course, it's just drwendyguest.com. Mm -hmm. uh, there's that little video explainer about the profile and then the link to take the quiz. And it's just asking you a, a quick series of nine questions. Nine questions, okay. Uh, that's kind of looking at how you're reacting to different situations. And after those nine questions, it'll give you your, your dominant and then your disharmony. And that's what the results will tell you. Mm -hmm. Okay. And who, who benefits from taking the, the quiz? So when, when you're feeling stressed or you're feeling like oh, something's missing, I think I'm doing all the right things. Well, the, the harmony profile will help you kind of identify an area that may need some support mm -hmm. that's not in your normal radar of things. So particularly like in the create creativity, the wisdom, right. uh, the inspiration. Um, it helps you kind of refine what activities to focus mm -hmm. on to really build up and reharmonize yourself. And as we mentioned, you teach at Florida International University. Yes. And what I like to know is, how do you implement <laughs> the Harmony Profile in your classes? Do you? 
I do, okay. absolutely, yes. And so in my health and fitness marketing class, um, students come in and to help them understand about the process of changing behaviors, I have them start with this Harmony Profile. And what that does is help them uh, figure out, well, where they're, where they're already comfortable, mm -hmm. but then also where they're not so comfortable, perhaps, or that disharmony. And then from there, they go in and they, they can narrow down some activities that they want to focus on to make a behavior change. And then we spend the rest of the semester helping them go through that healthy change process. Or How do you grade? <laughs> it's, it's a Who wonderful- Who is more balanced or who's most balanced? <laughs> it's more about uh, the, the reflective process that okay. they put into it. It's not, you know, there's not a right or wrong activity. It's more like, are you putting in the effort? Are to, you doing the work? Are you doing the work? Yeah. Okay. Now, how do the Harmony Profiles help when it comes to implementing those new habits into your life? So if someone says, my case needs more breathing, maybe a little more yoga, how do you work in doing that? So that's the, that's the main point, is a lot of times we're just thinking, oh, I've got to do something, I don't know what to do, well, okay, maybe I'll exercise more. Well, for me, this is what helps, and, and my own life personally, is when I'm, I know I'm off balance and I go, Okay, where am I off balance? All right, if I'm off balance and say foxtrot, okay, so now I know the kinds of activities and food and, and thought processes I want to focus on right. to bring that back into harmony. Okay. Now, as we get into healthy habits, there are a number of different patterns in our lives and understanding them can help us make better changes. And I want you to walk us through these, Dr. Dr. Gass, because habits. And anyone who thinks that habits <laughs> can't be broken, they actually can. It takes work, correct? Yes. But yeah. we can change our habits. And that's where we get into understand, understanding some of the systemic aspect of what's a habit, what's a pattern, and mm -hmm. then, of course, the system. So a lot of times we think, well, a habit is just this thing I, that I do, and, and I don't know why I do it, but I just do it, right? But when you understand the deeper meaning, right. so like the habit really is just kind of our, our symptomatic expression of a pattern. It's, it's what results from something else. And so when you understand that a habit is just like a symptom, right? then you, mm. go, you can look into understanding more about what, what's the pattern Okay, the pattern that's creating that habit or feeding that habit, supporting that habit. And that's really the underlying cause or reaction to, you could say, stories that we've created to ourselves. So what you're saying is that behind every habit, there's a pattern that feeds that habit. Yes. Yes. And so when we get closer to understanding the pattern that's feeding that habit, then we, we don't need the habit as much, right? Because right? it's just like you address the cause, you don't have the symptoms anymore, from, okay. a, from you know, medically speaking. And then from there, when we, talk, you know, when we understand kind of like what pattern is it that's, that's asking for attention, mm -hmm. um, you know, is it like, for example, eating? That's a, a common one we'd like to talk about when you're, you know, when you're, you've got something, some emotional trigger or like, you know, bad day at work or boyfriend breakup or whatever it is, and you go home and then you think, oh, what am I going to do? Okay, I'm going to go eat this ice cream. <laughs> right. And not just one bite, but I'm going to have the whole thing, you know, the whole court. So then you look at, okay, what's that deeper pattern that's creating that emotional reaction to the bad day? And do you have choices? And yes, we do. Yes. So then we look at the systems, and those are kind of those unresolved attitudes or judgments or biases mm -hmm. that that tell us what are, you know, what are we really thinking? What are those sim systems doing for us and to us? You know, who are we loyal to? Who are right. we not loyal to? All of those kinds of things. And that feeds the pattern, which then feeds the habit. Now we're gonna talk more about this, but I do wanna take a moment to remind our viewers that you can call in if you have a question. That number is 855-796-4475. We're standing by and love to hear from you. Now. What is the difference between starting a habit and getting rid of a habit? <laughs> if only we asked that question before we started the right? habit. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and of course, we learn habits from our, you know, our environment. Right. Right? Um, we, we see on TV, like, you know, eating that ice cream is going to solve that, you know, that bad moment or breakup. But it doesn't really. It doesn't. No, it doesn't. So, so really, it's about understanding 
the pattern and the symptom or the system that's causing that desire to react. You know, if I, and so if I want to change that, I want to go back and figure out what, the, what pattern am I in so then I, don't ha I can have choices about how I want to express that right. pattern or how I want to even acknowledge that story. So we were talking during the break, you know, I'm named Wendy after Peter Pan, so I love stories and, and we can tell stories that are accurate or inaccurate, right. you know, for like Peter. Peter's th thought all adults are, are bad pirates, you know, it's no fun to grow up, so we're not going to grow up, right? right? But when he can, you know, kind of like in, the, sorry, the analogy, the movie Hook, where he can realize that you can have both now that need to be the pirate is reduced. You can right. just be you, however that looks like. However that looks like, absolutely. Now let's go ahead and look at some steps for forming healthy habits. And the first one is recognizing the habit for what it is. And now mm -hmm. what do you mean by that? So that goes again to recognizing that pattern. Um, you know, like usually some, some event triggers that, that reaction. And when you can recognize the trigger, that, okay, I get in this situation and I tend to react this way. Okay, when you recognize the trigger of the habit before it happens, now it's like you can stop the stress before you react. So it really is a lot of listening and paying attention to the way that you react to certain situations. Yes, yes. There's, there's uh, some, some schools of thought that say, you know, be the observer of you and your body mm -hmm. in your story as opposed to being, you know, the actor right. or being like in the middle of it. Observe what's going on. Observe how your patterns, how do you right. react in these situations? And now when you know, you're recognizing the pattern, recognizing the system, sorry, I keep saying system, right. system that it's coming from. You know, am I, you know, am I needing recognition? Am I needing uh, acceptance? Am I needing loyal loyalty? So how can I go about doing that differently? Mm -hmm. I want to use a, a specific example, if you can uh, give sure. me one, Dr. Guest, so, and then we can apply exactly what we <laughs> just saw, so how, how we can recognize that and, and change the habit and become aware and make those changes. So let's say, use an example. Well, so of course, I'm going to go to the parent one. Um, you know, our, our kids figure out our buttons really fast. <laughs> And they right. love to push them. And so it's, you know, and then of course we go into this reaction mode and, and they, my kids love to tease me and, and get me going down these roads of, of stories that I'm, I'm really believing but not believing. Right. But know that I shouldn't be believing because I know that they're really teasing, but. <laughs> and then you almost. And then I go, you know, like I get caught up in that whole, that whole scene, but stepping back, you know, taking that breath, if you will, of, of recognizing, oh, they're just doing that trigger thing. They're doing that button thing. Oh, okay. Now I can, as opposed now, to reacting to it. Reacting, now I can play along with them. Mm -hmm. And instead of thinking that they're really being serious when they're not. <laughs> right. They just want to push mom's buttons, right? <laughs> right. Exactly. So we reveal the five stages of change when we come back. You're watching the Health Channel. All help all the time on South Florida PBS. Welcome back to the Health Channel, All Health, All the Time. I'm Kathy Buccio, and joining is Dr. Wendy Guess, a behavior change marketing educator with the College of Business at Florida International University. If you have a question for our expert, you still have time to call in. That number is 855-796-4475. Now, we're wrapping up this hour on managing harmony in your life and the steps to make those positive changes. So we've all been there trying something new, something healthy, only to realize we're in over our heads. <laughs> now we take a step back. So what are some of those setbacks when you start and you get discouraged and you got to start again? Yes. Well, so there's- You're a not alone, by the way. <laughs> That's right. right. We're not alone. Um, we have a whole science, if you will, called behavioral science or behavior change. And so there's a variety of models. The one that I like to use is called the stages of change or trans theoretical model. And with that model, it's really, it's, it's helping us understand that there's multiple phases of change. You don't just decide one day normally, uh, well, that normal people mm -hmm. don't just decide, okay, I'm, I'm changing this habit, I'm done, here we go. Okay. But there's, there's a whole 
a series of steps, five actually, that they've identified. So let's start with the first one, which is pre-contemplation. Right. Okay. So that pre-contemplation, the first stage, is, is really, it's like you may not even realize, you may be in either complete denial <laughs> or you don't know that you need to change or okay. you're just not willing to go there yet, right? So at that point, that's where you need like some, some extra supportive messages or information mm -hmm. to kind of help you get to that point of realizing that you now need to be maybe contemplating it, which gets us into the second step. So wait, if you're in denial though, Dr. Gass, does that make it harder <laughs> to acknowledge and find that harmony though? Absolutely, right, because you don't, you think everything's fine and, and you're, you're either, you don't want to quit the habit or you don't want to change to another habit. And so that's where it's really difficult to acknowledge that maybe something needs to be right. changed. Okay, and now, as you said, now we're moving on to the second stage, mm -hmm. which is now contemplation. Contemplation, and that's where you might be kind of like either, ah, I think it's a good idea, don't know if I'm ready yet, might think about, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna keep reading about it and decide how to get more supportive information, how to get myself off that fence. Okay. And, and really, so it's like these, these first two steps particularly are very internal, attitudinal, mm -hmm. if you will, um, that we need to go through that mental process before we're ever ready to, to make a physical And you change. have to want to make that change, which brings right. me to my third, which you say <laughs> is the most critical of it, all the steps. It is. Which is, this one is preparation. Yes, preparation is that step where, okay, now that you've, you've gone through the first two, you realize, yes, I am going to make this change. And instead of just jumping into whatever you think that new habit or behavior is supposed to look like, let's step back and take some time to really prepare, not just prepare, okay, so let's say I want to start a walking program. Well, where do I walk? When do I walk? What kind of gear, clothing, shoes do I need to walk? That's preparation? That's all preparation. Okay. It's that planning stage. Right. Right? So then who do I need to walk with? Who's now, and this is where for me it's like the really essential part of preparation is who am I going to call on for support when I'm ready to just cave in or, yes. or stop? You know, who's mm. my support system that's going to help to give you that motivational push that motivational you need. accountability, you know, that's either going to walk with me or are going to call me once a week to say, hey, how's the walking going? Right. Right. And that's that's the part that we really want to build in is that sense of accountability. Right, so then now we're officially ready to start. So okay. that means that now that you've gotten your walking gear and you know where you're gonna walk, now it's time to take action, which is our yes. step four, or stage so, four. Yes, yeah, so stage four, we're ready to put those walking shoes on and start walking. We know our route, we know our path. We're ready to, to take that action. Right. And that's now where we go into from the, from the mental and preparation piece, we're now going into the physical action piece mm -hmm. of changing that habit. And, you know, that, that, ha that stage can last six months to a year. We might fall back a few times. We might, you know, get back into preparation again. You can always restart, you restart exactly. this. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. And, you know, because that, that changing that habit, it does take time. It right. takes longer than 21 days. Absolutely. It does. Because <laughs> that's just kind of a mental uh, process. But, but here you say that preparation, which I agree with you, it mm -hmm. is a really important step. It's really critical. But I think the last step is really important too, which is maintenance, which means sticking to your plan of action, correct? Yes. So generally the rule of thumb is once you've been in action stage for about six months consistently, then you're now considered to be in maintenance where it's not, you're not as likely to fall back into a, you know, a non-action right? You're pretty consistent. You know, it's kind of like, I remember the years of where we actually had to wear seat belts. Right. Because I grew up in an era where it was sort of secondary. Optional. <laughs> Optional. Eh, if I right. were to die, I would die, you know, whatever. But um, when, you, when you had to, it was like, I really had to spend some time consciously thinking about, okay, I get in the car, I put on my seat belt. Now, I'm in maintenance mode. I don't have to think about that. It's like I get in the car, I put on my seatbelt. Now you created the good habit of putting on your yeah, seatbelt. Yeah, so it's not like it's not a decision every right. time we get in the car. Right. And hopefully, like you know, things like brushing your teeth. It's it's just something that you do 
it's well, not I a decision. So. Yeah, you know, it's like you don't have to make that decision. Let's see, do I want to brush my teeth this time right. or not? We're now in a place of maintenance where you just right. brush your teeth. So it's like it's just in there. Yeah. Okay, but do you use this, Dr. Gass? Do you use this all the time still? I constantly have to, re you know, I mean, we are, we are human beings. We are constantly in change and stress. And so I use these to kind of help me stay centered, grounded, harmonized, focused. Yeah. Amazing. I'm now, probably my biggest client. Absolutely. You're, <laughs> you're like not only a teacher, I tried it myself as well. Yes. Okay, so for a few examples of healthy habits, let's look at this clip for healthy habits to form before you turn 30. These are great tips, right? Okay. These are great tips to add in finding that balance and finding that harmony. And to, I think these can also help when you find out your harmony profile when you go online, how you can implement these for a better quality of life, really. It really is. Uh, and it's really, it's about supporting each one of the harmonies so that none of them ever have to end up mm -hmm. feeling depleted. Absolutely. Because are there any additional habits that you recommend for someone to find that harmony or some that weren't mentioned? Yeah, so in, in each, uh, like each one, it's about trying different things. Mm -hmm. So um, for me, especially for the swing, it's, it's about trying new things. So like just a few years ago, I learned about this instrument. Um, a few years before that, I learned about kayaking. I'd been canoeing, but I hadn't been kayaking. So mm. there's just a variety of different ways that you can experience new things. Right. Um, for me, nature has always been a place where I go to kind of refill my cup right. um, and, and find that inspiration. And now I just make a point to every morning I wake up and I look for in inspirational information. Right. And so then, would you say that's the common denominator with all the profiles, is trying new things to sort of enhance that balance? Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, so finding out a variety of things that work for you. Absolutely, and that's the most important. As we wrap up, any last minute tips before you go that you want to share with our viewers, especially about the, your harmony profiles and finding that balance in an everyday stressful life? Yeah, stress happens, mm -hmm. and it's not the stress. I mean, because stress is just stress. It's just an event. It's really, it's our reaction to that stressful event that makes all the difference. Mm -hmm. So I would encourage you to really stop and think, okay, it's stress. It's just stress. How do I want to react to that? Or do I want to take control of how I act instead of react? Absolutely true. Thank you so much, Dr. Gus. And it wouldn't also help that we can all get an instrument like that, start our day off. <laughs> yeah. Or can. maybe take it in the car as we drive around <laughs> South Florida. That'll Absolutely. help. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Fascinating show. That's all the time Thank that you. we have this hour. So be sure to join us next time on The Health Channel. All Health all the time on South Florida PBS. And follow us on social media at All Health TV, hashtag All Health TV. And please be sure to visit our website, allhealthtv.com, where you can watch a live stream of The Health Channel and watch videos from previous episodes. I'm Kathy Buccio. We'll see you next time.